Hello and welcome to The Classical Now. I'm Will Fraser and tonight I'm joined by the pianist Lucille Chung. Lucille, it's lovely to have you on the show. Thanks for having me. Now Lucille, you've done quite a few television interviews, haven't you? Quite a few, yes. <laughs> and when did you do most of them? Probably before the age of 12, mostly when I was 8, 9, 10, so. And at that point you were already playing the piano in public? Before. Yes, yeah, I started when I was 8 performing in public, so um, yeah, I did some TV shows as well. Great. When exactly did you actually start playing the piano? Um, I was six. I started when I was six. I actually asked for a piano when I was three years old to my parents, and, and they're not musical, so they didn't take it seriously. So they bought me a toy piano for Christmas. And every year I would ask, no, I want a real piano, a real piano. And finally, at the age of six, I got a real piano, and I started having lessons, and that's how I started. Even though your parents weren't musical, once they realized that you had a great gift for the piano, were they very supportive? Oh, extremely. And I'm very grateful towards them because, um, unfortunately, when I was very young, I didn't practice that much. And I'm sure if they would have forced me or pushed me, I would have been turned off by music. But um, they really opened the way and led it for me. So I'm very grateful to them. So how could you become um, excellent on the piano if you didn't do much practice? I guess it's talent <laughs> and I just loved performing and I think that was enough for me and probably two three weeks before a competition or a concert I would practice somewhat but um, I just remember never practicing and I loved to perform and people liked me so it was this circle I suppose. Did you find it easy? Yes it was very easy and that's what kind of drawed me to it um, because I was uh, I was enjoying the public life and I found it very easy and people were very nice to me and so that's how I started. Which pianists uh, influenced you and made you want to become a pianist yourself? Mm, good question. Um, I love, of course, Martha Argerich. You know, every woman pianist just adores her and um, she's an icon, but um, I love Radu Lupu. Uh, Christian Zimmerman I've heard recently doing some wonderful things and of course recordings of Horowitz I never got to hear him live but um, just recordings of Horowitz and what about when you were a child I think you saw someone on TV oh that's embarrassing yeah I was three and I saw Liberace on TV playing and I think that what really influenced me to want a piano. <laughs> right. I'm sorry to say. But, uh, but I'm sure, well, that's a very good thing, a good is. effect that Liberace's had on yes. the world of music. If he's yeah. caught you in the
One of the composers you're performing tonight is Alexander Scriabin. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit about him and why you picked him for tonight's program? Um, he's, he was born in Russia and uh, is a wonderful composer. And for example, he died quite young due to co uh, complications from a pimple. <laughs> and he was a very mystical man and he was uh, very much into colors, into sounds and, and quite an interesting character. And um, I just love his music and especially his early works are very Chopin-esque, very simple, very accessible, and, and his later works are much more quirky, ecstatic, exuberant, but I, I love his music. One of the pieces you're performing for us tonight is a piece of late Scriabin called mm -hmm. Vers la Flamme. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us what you feel when you're playing it? Oh, I just love this piece. Um, I heard the recording by Horowitz playing it live and I thought it was the most exuberant, ecstatic piece and I always wanted to learn it. And of course it's um, one of Scriabin's later works. Uh, it's right at the end. I think the se Opus 74 were his last works and this is Opus 72. And um, even the the title, Vers la Flamme, Towards the Flame, it's just spooky and yet it grabs you. And so that's why I chose this piece. I always wanted to play it.
If you could um, travel in a time machine back in time and meet any composer and anyone from the last however many hundred years, which one would you pick and why? <laughs> I would say Mozart because I think he's the greatest genius and I would love to see how he worked and see how he performed and um, just to get to know the real person, I suppose, behind the, the composer. Mozart has a reputation, probably largely because of the film Amadeus, Amadeus yeah. for being <laughs> rather flaky and lightweight as a personality. Um, do you think that's true? I'm sure there's some part of it. I mean, not not everyone is well balanced, and to have such great genius in you, you must kind of let it out in another way. And if he was quirky, that's possible. That's what they say, but one never really knows. <laughs> Do you think it's possible, um, because so many of the great composers are so different, for instance, Bach, Mozart, Beethoven, Mahler, is it possible to say that one is better than another, or are they all no. equal somehow? I guess they are. I mean, just some composers work harder at achieving the results, and some um, are just more natural, but I, I wouldn't compare them. It depends on what music you're listening to. I mean, and Mozart was a natural, was he not? Yes, he was a natural. I mean, he, he would just sit down and write and would hear it all in his head. And you would have other composers which would just toil and, you know, re-scribble and, uh, you know, every bar. Yeah. Beethoven was one of those type of composers, yes. wasn't he? Yes, that he would always revise what he had written and he was quite messy in his handwriting. <laughs> Do you find that in the piece by Beethoven that you're performing mm -hmm. tonight, the variations which he, on a uh, theme by Zussmeyer, which he wrote when he was quite young, do you feel that it's laboured music? I think it's much more improv uh, improvisational, because at that time, what was really popular with the Viennese public uh, was um, just composers using the latest operatic hits and kind of improvising, and those were crowd pleasers. And I guess just to survive, he wrote many of them. And um, no, it's much, much more lighthearted. It's not like one of his symphonies. It's early Beethoven, and it's comical. And, uh, and so it has its operatic roots, and it's just easygoing. And do you think Beethoven managed to impress people with his improvisations? I'm sure that's how he earned his living <laughs> when he first started out, so I'm sure he did.
Well, Lucille, thank you very much for joining me on the show. It's been wonderful to have thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Will. And thank you for watching. I'm Will Fraser, and remember, the future of classical music is now. Good night.